how I looked. You know what I mean? And then I realized he was like, because I, I know every black person in Vancouver. <laughs> so I thought he was, you know, trying to check me out, but it really wasn't that. But anyways, I like to have fun. I like to be informal. I like to talk about what's going on. And, and so do we, um, everyone right now, just can you please just by a show of hands, just say we're just going to have a really good time. And we're just going to, you know, just get together. So just clap if you're here to have a really good time with me. <laughs> anyone who wants to do something different with their lives, put up your hands, sir, don't be shy. Yes, a few of you, a lot of people, a couple of you guys, okay. And who here hates their job? Put up their hand if you want to change that, just can't stand the people at your job. If the people at your job are here, don't put your hand up, don't put your hand up. <laughs> but if you have, like, a, who here wants to make a career move? Who here doesn't like who they're sleeping next to at night, can't stand them? Anybody? Don't put up your hand if that significant other is here. But, you know, just little things that you're a bit kind of like, mm, I could change this, right? Has that ever happened to you that you look at your life and you're like, this can't be it? Has that ever happened to you? Where you look at the person next to you and you go, this can't be it. <laughs> now, I was in a happy relationship. Good for you, good for you. I'm not. Um, but, single and happy, single and happy. There. So, people always ask me, they always say, Trey, you know, the work that you've done, like with television and acting and everything else, they always, sometimes when I get these really deep reporters, because they like to send me deep reporters who like to ask me things, and they like to say, were you called to do this work? Do you feel called? I'm not going to be real honest with you guys, right? Real honest. But when, when, when um, interviewers and reporters ask me, I always go, oh, yes. <laughs> I felt compelled to do this work. And, and that's a lie. That really is a lie, right? I didn't feel that acting, writing, or producing was my calling at that point in time. When I first started out, I really did not think I was called. And, and I remember being in about grade 11, grade 12, and I thought that I had a calling to be an actor. This was around grade 11 or 12. And I remember running home to my Jamaican mom at home. So some of you guys are gonna know where this is going when you got a Jamaican mom at home. And I remember running home to my Jamaican mom and I went, mom, because this was my calling, right? This was my calling. My mom didn't realize this, but I remember I went, mom, I figured it out. I know what I'm gonna do with my life. I wanna be an actor. <laughs> and my Jamaican mom looked me up and down and she went, <laughs> The only acting you're going to be doing in my house is acting like a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> so Jamaican mom just shut down the dream. You know what I'm saying? Shut it down. So it always amazes me now when people interview Jamaican mom, right? They're always like, aren't you really proud that your mom, that your daughter is like the first black woman to have her own show in a primetime network? And Jamaican mom said, Oh, yes! <laughs> I always knew she was going to make it. I was with her all the way. She made her mom is a liar. <laughs> Down too. You know what's up. You know what's up. J 
just shut them down. It's okay. Okay, so you're related. You're related, but it's okay. You're going to change your vision after the change, right? So that was the, so I didn't have no calling, right? And then the other thing, I wanted to be an actor, but let, let's face it. Let, like, I'm going to keep it real because Trey keeps it real. I knew that I did not look like Halle Berry, right? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I wasn't under any kind of false pretense <laughs> that I looked like the women on TV, right? I remember when we got the kink in my hair and I was giving out post, uh, giving out flyers for the kink in my hair. And they give you, a, someone said to me to just now, to the show, goes, oh, you don't look like the girl on TV. <laughs> she was trying to be polite. I knew what you were thinking. <laughs> It's okay, you ain't gonna tr trouble my self-esteem today. No, you ain't, right? But I don't look like the women on TV, right? They're usually like a size two, right? Halle Berry. I remember when I started my career, I was watching Entertainment Tonight, and there was Halle Berry sitting on Entertainment Tonight, right? And Halle Berry was like crying, right? And not just like a cute little cry, like, like you know, nose running, ugly cry, over ugly cry. And Halle Berry was sitting on TV, and Halle Berry was like, oh, the industry is so hard for women who look like me. And I was like, damn! Like, if Hallie's having a hard time, man, I just back up my shit and go home now. That's what I was thinking. I was like, Hallie is having a hard time in Hollywood, right? That's some serious stuff, right? So I had the excuse, because even though I knew it was in my calling to do the work that I was doing, my excuse was, I don't look like the women on TV. Two, I got a Jamaican mom at home. <laughs> Three, I also, you know, we, we were, my mom is a single mom. My mom had me at age 17, right? So my mom was struggling. She was, there was three of us at home. When we moved from England, we were living in Rexdale, which is like a really working class area, you know? So I grew up in the streets, right? I'm just keeping it really real for you. I, nobody gave me a TV show, right? Nobody said, here, Dre, right? Like, so that was my excuse. I was just like, you know what? I come from not TV star quality, right? Anyways, let me keep it going. I'm gonna put this down for a minute. Uh oh, here we go. Uh oh, it's okay, don't write that, right? <laughs> but the kink, people always ask me, how did you start the kink, right? And when I bump into people around my neighborhood, like sometimes I go back to Rexdale and I, I like to, you know, inspire the kids there and I, I go back to all of the old neighborhoods and, and sometimes I bump into people that I grew up with, right? And they always say, this is one of the things that they always say, they always say, oh, you're so lucky. Oh. You're so lucky that they gave you a show, oh. right? No luck in this, right? No luck in this. And so I can be really honest with you. When The King came about, I was a struggling actor, really struggling actor. And I also was working night shift because I, I, I used to work night shift in social services. And so I used to work with abused women and children. And I was doing the night shift from 12 to 8 at night. And then I would go out and auditions, right? So I would go out and auditions. And, and I remember one of the, this was really the turning point in my life. That I got this top acting agent. And I was really excited about having this top acting agent. And I remember this top acting agent, the first thing he sent me out on one of my auditions was crackhead number one. I can't make this up, people, because people are like, seriously, yeah, crackhead number one. Then, after that, no. So I remember I got the crackhead number one, and I was like, damn, crackhead number one? Seriously? Right? But I was like, okay, red stew, so let's be the best crackhead possible, right? So I went into the audition, and I was like, yeah, I'm crackhead. And I was just like, this doesn't feel good in my soul, right? And then I remember the second audition that they sent me out on was, and I can't make this up, was baby mama number two, right? <laughs> baby mama number two. And I went in there and they were just like, come on, Trey, you could be a baby mama. And I was like, mm, this still is not feeling good in my soul. But the rent was due, right? So you become the best baby mama you can. Because <laughs> sometimes when the rent is due, we make choices based on the rent is due. You understand what I'm saying? I'm keeping it real for you guys, right? And then the third audition, that my top acting agent sent me out on was black girl with an attitude, right? And I went, hey girl, right? And I remember I went in there, 
and I went into the I went into the audition room, and I remember the agent said to me, Trey, can't you just do it a little bit more ebonics? And I was like, what the hell is ebonics? Right? I didn't know what ebonics was. And then he said, do that thing with your neck that all you black girls do. And I was like, what the heck is he talking about? Right? But then he was like, come on, Trey, just get in there. And then he said something to me, which really shocked me. He said, where's your ABCs? And I was like, ABCs? Exactly. I went, what? And he said, your ABCs. And I was like, what is your ABCs? And I said, what, what, what is that, sir? Because I thought this was some kind of new technology or something, you know, that they were doing in the casting room. And he said, your ABCs are angry black chick. Wow. I can't make this up. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, it's angry black chick. He goes, where's your inner angry black chick? <laughs> and I remember. <laughs> I walked out of that audition, and I remember thinking, if this is how the world sees me, you gotta change it, girl. You gotta change it, right? You gotta change it. You gotta change it. You gotta change it, right? And I remember thinking, this ain't right. And I remember saying, if this is what they're writing for me, then I must can write something better. Thank you. Can I get a witness? Thank you. <laughs> right? And I said, I must can write something better. And I remember going home, and I talked to my brother, and I thought to, because at this point, still, I still had st a little bit of faith in the industry. Still a little bit of faith. And my brother is also an actor, right? But my brother is one of those guys, my brother is like 6'4", chiseled, cheekbones, good looking. Like Everywhere my brother goes, somebody stops him and says, are you a model? That's never happened to me in my life. No one's ever stopped me and said, are you a model, Trey Anthony, right? Never heard that. So I thought my brother was getting better roles than me. So I turned to him and I said, Darren, I said, what is your agent sending you out on? And he said, well, Trey, last week I was the black guy who shot the black guy, <laughs> right? And then the week before that, I was the black guy who got shot. 